like a lot of horror fans who watch a lot of horror, I've become acclimatised and it takes a lot to scare me. But do you know that feeling where you actually feel like your heart is in your throat? This is what Insidious Chapter 3 gave me. That's not to say the film is perfect, but I feel like in terms of the scare factor, for me it's the scariest of the three Insidiouses to date with this one. The story's also quite fascinating. It's not as complex or as complicated as the story in the first two, but I think it was more enjoyable. Maybe because it wasn't it wasn't as complex. In this discussion, there may be spoilers for things that happen in Insidious 1 and 2, but I will not give any spoilers for Insidious Chapter 3 because I, I do thoroughly recommend it. And what I will say, first of all, is that it's made me annoyed at the end of Insidious Chapter 2 because at the end of Insidious 2, Elise walks into this house and she meets a girl called Alison, I believe, and then we, we see that she sees something, but we don't know what it is. There are some theories on the internet about what that is if you want to read into it. It's quite fascinating. And I thought, okay, we'll find out in Insidious Chapter 3. No, we won't. So this actually taught me two things. It taught me, one... Don't believe anything that the Insidious films promise because they won't deliver on it. I haven't looked too much into it because I don't want spoilers for films 4 and 5, but I don't think they've ever gone back to that story, to what was introduced at the end of that episode. And I guess it's maybe too late because the actors are much older now. But it also taught me that I think they regret what they did with Elise. Kind of. Because, as I said, these are spoilers for parts one and two, the first two films, it was so powerful in those films when they killed off Elise. But they could still utilise the character. But there's only so much you can do with the characters in spirit because how can you help them to communicate with the living and drive the narrative forward? So that's why I think Insidious Chapter 3 and I believe Chapter 4 are prequels because I think they regret killing off this amazing character because once she's gone there is there are limitations. So with chapter three, they've gone back. And actually, once I got over that fact, and I kind of thought, okay, we're not getting the story that chapter two promised, I actually enjoyed it. And we learn about how Elise started to delve deeper into this, this place we know to be called The Further, and how she met various characters. And that story revolves around the story of Quinn, played by Stephanie Scott, uh, of course, we have Lin Shay as Elise. And Quinn is a young girl, uh, I believe, just left high school auditioning for college. I, I say auditioning, she's auditioning for theatre school. And the, the strange things start to happen to her. The demonic presence is very much known. And she gets into some pretty dangerous situations. And I feel like more than the first two films, the presence was able to touch her physically a lot more. And that, for me, meant it was a lot scarier. And I do think it relied even more heavily than the first two films on jump scares. But in a way, where I said it did at one point feel like my heart was in my throat. And that doesn't happen that often for me with horror films. Because, you know, when you've seen a lot of them, you kind of just get used to them. But this one, this one really did. And sure, the narrative may, may not be quite as surprising uh, as the other two, the first two. But in a way, I enjoyed that because it allowed me to enjoy the characters instead and to spend time you know, getting to know the beginning of Elisa's journey, spending time with Quinn, uh, also her father, uh, Sean, played by Dermot Mulroney. Uh, Quinn's mother and Sean's wife had passed away uh, at some point before this film began. I can't remember the exact time frame. So there's an emotional aspect to it too. And I do think that uh, Elise is the driving force behind this, but we also get some other characters introduced, such as Specs and Tucker. And it's 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 really well done. It's well written. It's well developed. It's It's creepy. It is. It is scary. It is spooky. And it did lodge my heart in my throat a couple of times. And I really appreciate that. And, I, and I'm really glad it did. I'm not normally that bothered about jump scares. I personally prefer, you know, twisted psychological horror, things that are unexpected. 
and I feel like that was more so the case with the first two Insidious films. They still had jump scares, but I feel like the narratives were a bit more unexpected, and there were some shocking, maybe not twists, but shocking things revealed. This one, not so much the case. The jump scares were more at the forefront, but it worked. It absolutely worked. It was an interesting narrative. The characters were great. And it was scary. What more can I ask for? So once I got over my initial shock, confusion and disappointment that we weren't actually going to be exploring the story that was introduced at the end of Insidious 2, I thought, I'm going to like this quite quickly. You know, quite early on I realised these are characters I like, this is going to be really interesting. It's pretty good. I don't actually know if the fifth one, I, I don't know anything about the fifth one because I've intentionally avoided everything about it. But I am pretty sure the next one, the fourth one, is also a prequel, which I'm looking forward to. And I'm, I'm glad that I'm a little bit obsessed now because Insidious 1, it was okay. Insidious 2, much better. Insidious 3, really rather enjoyed it. Really looking forward to the fourth one and then the fifth one. Definitely having a lot of fun with these. Really glad. Really, really glad that it scared me. Really keen to see what else is in store. I forgot to provide some of the uh, facts with this one. This was released originally in 2015, written and directed by Lee, Lee Winnell. Um, going into it, I didn't actually know that it wasn't James Wan who directed it. I just didn't look at the, the information before watching it because, well, because I knew I wanted to watch it regardless. And... I don't think it's notab noticeable that it's a different director. You know, sometimes when you have a film series, you notice that there's somebody different behind it immediately. But it didn't occur to me. It definitely didn't occur to me that it was a different director, which is a good thing, because it means that it feels like it's part of the same film series. And I think that that's something that's, that's quite important. But at the same time, it did... Well, it was different. As I said, it wasn't as complicated... It relied more heavily on jump scares, but I actually preferred it. So it depends on what you're looking for, I guess. But for me personally, it ticked all of the right boxes and more and has left me really rather excited for the next one. 